Hi, I am Marcia Steele. Recently, I overheard a number of frustrated managers complaining about having to go to meeting after meeting, yet problems were still going unresolved. Why? Because no one wanted to make a decision. After I overheard that conversation, I decided to create this video series. I'm making them available to you. In this first video, I will outline a simple three-step strategy development process. Before I begin, let me ask, how is your company doing? Are you struggling? Are you looking for new and innovative ways to grow? Are you searching for a strategic advantage? If you answered yes to any of the above questions, this set of videos should be of great interest to you. Whether you're a Fortune 100, an Inc. 500, or a fledgling startup, there are two things most companies wrestle with strategy development and execution. How to turn strategies into actions and how to stay focused on executing the vital few strategies needed for growth and not get pulled away by the many tasks that consume us in busy work. I know because I have seen it for over 15 years. When I first started Strategic Realities, I would work with a company to develop strategies, to give them that competitive edge, to grow their product lines, to move them into new markets. We would develop amazingly innovative strategies. Yet when I returned to conduct this strategy review session, very little, if anything, had been executed. Now, I'm speaking about some of America's best organizations run by some of the best leadership. All of us at Strategic Realities labored over this. What were the stumbling blocks? Was it size, culture, industry? Did the percent of execution vary between public versus private or for-profit versus nonprofit. Finally, key patterns started to surface. After countless months of research and analysis, testing and tweaking, we developed a process that is simple yet powerful. It is a three by four strategy execution process that will allow you to systematically move strategies into actions and keep them alive until you achieve success. In this first video, we will review the basic elements of strategy development. No, not because I am affectionately referred to as the strategy genie, but because from time to time, we all need reminders. Also, reviewing the basic elements of strategy development will provide a good foundation on which to build everything else. In the second video, I will introduce you to our 3 by 4 strategy execution process. The first video, that second video is going to cover the first three steps called ATM. The third video will address the second part of the 3 by 4 execution process, the four R's. You may be asking, what qualifies me to talk about strategy? And why do they call me the strategy genie? Let me give you a little background. I travel all over the country working with companies to develop strategic solutions from industry leaders such as General Electric and Coca-Cola to mid-sized companies like Cadillac, and J Cadillac Jack <laughs> to
to governmental agencies like the Los Angeles Department of Transportation. What I'm about to share with you is in essence the exact framework I use with these organizations to develop their strategic solutions. I bet it will work for you as well. Also, before starting my own company, Strategic Realities, I worked for General Electric for over nine years. If there was one thing GE taught us well, it was strategy. But guess what? They also expected us to execute. Every division was given the mandate, be number one or number two in your industry, or you will be sold. Today, I want to help you to be number one or number two in your industry, as well as in the eyes of your customers. Let us begin by looking at the basic fundamentals of developing strategy. We're going to walk through an example that everyone can relate to, buying a house. Now, admittedly, <laughs> Business challenges are far more complex, but for illustration purposes, simplicity is always best. Let me actually use a chart to step you through the process. Okay, let's walk through the process. At the top is your goal, your dream house. You're here. How do you get from where you are to where you want to be? From just not talking about buying a house to actually moving in and grilling steaks on your patio. Believe it or not, you can accomplish any goal in just three simple steps. The first step is to identify all the things you will need to do to reach your goal. What do you think some of those things would be? Well, in today's market, you will need to have good credit good credit you might also want to secure the down payment for the house chances are you might even want to pre-qualify for the mortgage for mortgage Obviously, there would be several other things you would need to do, but you get the point. We call these things critical success factors. Critical, critical success factors. They're critical success factors, or CSFs. We call them so because they're factors that are critical to your success. They're not nice to have, not good to have, they're critical and there's a difference. So the first step is to identify your critical success factors. The second step is to identify your barriers. You know, as well as I do, sooner or later, Murphy's Law will come into place and you're going to encounter barriers, barriers that will potentially keep you from achieving your goal. What could some of those be? You may have high credit card debt. Credit card debt, yes. Potentially, you might need to sell your existing home. Sell existing home. Okay. Again, just like before, there are other things, you know, you might need to pay off a car loan, you know. For space, you get the point. Now, you may be thinking, poor credit, not so fast. When you have an issue covered under one area, there is no need to repeat it under another area. This is a huge mistake when developing strategies. I have reviewed strategy plans done by so-called experts <laughs> and seen this mistake countless times. 
the same issue should not be duplicated through your plan. Since we listed good credit under CSFs, we don't need to address credit again under the barriers. Got it? So the first step is your critical success factors. Your second is your barriers. Now for step three, strategy development. This is where the fun really begins because this is where we separate the boys from the men and the girls from the women. You would not believe how many people talk about strategies all day long without having any idea if their strategies are really strategic. Now, many factors come into play when creating strategies, but at a minimum, strategies must address two things. They must meet a critical success factor or overcome a barrier. Other than that, you don't have a strategy. You have a nice to do. So let's continue with our example. Our first critical success factor here is having good credit. So let us create a strategy that would help us meet this critical success factor. Again, let me just put meet right here, that would help you, and overcome. Remember, we need to meet these and overcome these, okay? So, good credit. What would be a strategy that could help us meet the CSF? Maybe establish, we could establish an auto, an automatic auto pay, uh, bill payment bill payment system. This would help us not have any late payments right before we go for a mortgage and thus have good credit. See how this works? Another CSF is securing the down payment. A possible strategy to meet that could be implement, implement an aggressive, because we need this money right away, aggressive savings plan, savings plan. Now, this one strategy will help us do two things. First, it will meet the critical success factor of having the down payment. It will also enable us to overcome a barrier, paying down our credit card debt. Now, if you're able to create a strategy that both meets a CFS and overcomes a barrier, we call that a double whammy or a no-brainer. Do it and do it fast. When you're able to meet all your CSFs, you can check them off and you can bam, 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 overcome your barriers you are well on the way to achieving your goals, no matter what your goal may be, personal or professional. This framework will automatically help you develop strategic solutions to meet them. Let me, over let me recap for you. First, identify your critical success factors. Second, determine the barriers that could potentially stand in the way of your success. And third, develop strategies that either meet a critical success factor or overcome a barrier. Whether you're preparing for a ball game, preparing to do battle, to create strategy, strategy is all about finding a way to win, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Sometimes it is, in the case of a game, a block and tackle. Sometimes in warfare, it is attack and advance. It's one, two, one, two, critical su success factors or barriers. I happen to be a big movie fan. And the typical gunfight is a perfect example of the one, two in the creation of strategy not critical success factors and barriers, but usually attack and advance. 
one side shoots, that's the attack, and while your opponent is taking cover, they advance. Question for you, are you advancing? If not, why not? When your opponent is taking cover, i.e. not doing much, waiting for the economy to, re to turn around, sitting in fear and not making decisions, it is the perfect time for you to advance. This is the perfect time for you to strategically plan to execute and gain the advantage. Whether you're a business leader or a member of a team, a volunteer in an association or in your community. You want to be successful by design, not by chance. This three-step process, this strategy development process will help you focus on the key issues, address your challenges, and develop strategies to achieve your goals. So you don't have to be afraid to make a decision. And because it is a simple process, it will be easy to communicate, understand, and execute. So roll up your sleeves and get started. In the next video, I will share with you a powerful tool you can use to turn your strategies into actions. Till the next time, I want to leave you with a quote I heard the other day. I think it is very appropriate to what we're talking about and the times in which we're living in. It says, he who wants milk should not sit on a stool in the middle of the pasture and expect the cow to back up to him. This is Marcia Steele, your strategy genie, wishing you every success in the world.